20 books I don't hear on BookTok. I keep seeing like all these articles talking about how BookTok only recommends the same 20 books. And I also saw a user who I will tag right here share their 20 recommendations that they never see on BookTok. And I wanted to do the same thing. So number one, Robert Cormier's Fade. is a book that I picked up in like junior high and I picked it up because of the blurb on the front cover. Imagine what might happen if Holden Caulfield stepped into H.G. Wells' The Invisible Man, and you'll have an idea of how good fate is. I was absolutely riveted, Stephen King. This book was so messed up to my young mind, I still think about it all the time. Number two, Throat Sprockets by Tim Lucas, about a man who, during his lunch break, he goes and catches adult films, but uh, he becomes obsessed by a mysterious film and it's about obsession, it's a horror novel, and it's just really, really worth reading. Number three is James Herbert's The Fog, no relation to the John Carpenter film. This is about a mysterious fog that rolls into town and makes anyone who comes in contact with it insane. Number four, Jack Ketchum's Old Flames. This is actually two novellas. Uh, if you like Jack Ketchum, this is just as disturbing as any of his other work, and there's two for the price of one. Next two are poetry. I never hear poetry on my book recommendations, and I think everyone should read a little bit of poetry, but they are, of course, horror. Choking Back the Devil, poems by Donna Lynch. It's just really beautifully written, macabre stuff. Sarah Tatlinger's The Devil's Dreamland. This is a poetry collection that is entirely inspired by the life in times of H.H. H. Holmes, the uh, serial killer from Chicago uh, at the turn of the century. Next up is Richard Matheson's Earthbound. Uh, don't let this really bad cover fool you. This is a great little erotic novel. Uh, it's about a man and a woman who go to their summer home and they find a mysterious painting in the attic. Well, the husband does and he starts to see a woman who looks a lot like the woman in the painting. Maynard's House. This is a 1980s novel about a Vietnam War vet who uh, is gifted a house uh, from his friend that he lost in the war. And it's very haunting and it deals with PTSD, uh, something you didn't see a lot of during the 80s. This is a almost forgotten novel, but it's mentioned in uh, Grady Hendrix paperbacks from hell. Really worth a read. This one is really strange because it's this tiny little almost barely can call it a book, but it's called Teenage Grave, and it's produced by Filthy Loot, and it's actually a collection of four short stories, and they're all four really good, and it's by an indie author and publisher. So uh, I picked it up because of the cover. I thought it looked really neat, and who doesn't love like a little pamphlet-sized book? J.D. Ballard's Crash. People who get off on living through crashes. The next two are both by one of my favorite authors. It's actually a short story collection called Red Dreams by Dennis Etchison. Dennis Etchison is a name I do not hear enough of in the horror realm of readers, and he might be one of the best short story writers. Uh, and this is my favorite collection. Also, I'm recommending his novel, Dark Side. The next one is by Jillian Flynn. Anyone who loves like Gone Girl or Sharp Objects should check out her small novella. It's a little uh, haunting ghost story called The Grown Up. You can read it in like one sitting. Ian Reed's Foe, the writer of I'm Thinking of Ending Things, another one of my favorite novels. Uh, his second novel, I think is just as good. It's a psychological thriller about a, a couple who live in a farmhouse whose lives are upended when a mysterious stranger shows up. Next three are all nonfiction. I read a lot of nonfiction that involves like cinema and horror. So D.W. Griffith's The Birth of a Nation, a history of the most controversial motion picture of all time. And that's, you know, to say the least, this is the history of one of the, one of the most groundbreaking films of all times, but also how this racist film pretty much, not even pretty much, it did, rebirth the Ku Klux Klan and all the controversy that it created. It's a great read, it's a hard read, but it's worthwhile. Friedkin Connection, a memoir. This is a memoir of the director of The Exorcist, and he's very honest about how shitty he was to so many people. Eyes Wide Open, a memoir of Stanley Kubrick, written by the screenwriter of Eyes Wide Shut, The Circus of Dr. Lau. This one feels a little bit like something wicked this way comes, small sleepy town in Arizona, and then a mysterious circus shows up, led by Dr. Lau and his mysterious mythical creatures who teach all the townspeople a lesson, more or less. Number 19, The Loss of All Lost Things. It's a short story collection, a very dark short story collection, but beautiful also. Uh, the first story is about an abducted child written from their POV, so 
trigger warning. My final recommendation is uh, of a graphic novel titled Sabrina by Nick Dernasso. Sabrina tells the story of a murdered woman named Sabrina and how conspiracy theories uh, affect the town and loved ones' lives and just the impact uh, that can have on a community. It's incredible. So those are 